So good. All right. Hey there, good people. Today we've got another episode of Lifestyle Medicine. We've got my dear friend Antonio Barros, who is a licensed acupuncturist. We went to acupuncture school. What years were you there? What, when did you graduate? How old? Uh, 06 through 10. 06 yeah. through 10. Okay, so I was there yeah. 08 to 13. So we crossed over, but um, I trained martial arts with Ashi years back. Um, he's a very gifted acupuncturist, musician, definitely in the whole health and wellness field. You've been a devout meditator for many years, so you've got a pretty strong mindfulness practice. Is there anything else you want to add to that in terms of sort of who you are and what you're doing at the current moment? Um, not really. I would almost say like I'm a, I'm a gardener, <laughs> you know, <and> like, <laughs> yeah. I'd love to talk about that more, just more, um, and we can get right into it or another time. Like I've been spending a lot of time in my garden basically and around yeah. plants, yep. but I've also, I just finished, um, doing a spirit of the points workshop with Lonnie Jarrett this oh, last cool. weekend. Um, it was, it was really awesome. And we were supposed to be taking it in person down in Southern Oregon, but then COVID hit, you know, and we had to, everything had to move online. And, yep. uh, it was one of the things that really kind of, he didn't focus on it specifically, but it was kind of underlying when he talks about like virtues is that like, I just really think we as acupuncturists wear, um, wear two different hats, you know, mm -hmm. and, and one is the mechanic hat and one's the gardener hat. And when we're in the mechanic hat, we fix broken stuff, you know, we treat pain, we treat, um, yep. instability, you know, we treat lack of whatever. There's something, there's some type of imbalance disharmony you know and but mm -hmm. the other hat that we wear is uh the hat of the gardener where there's nothing wrong with this this person or this plant yeah. you're just tending helping it yeah exactly you're you're helping yeah. it to to cultivate its own truest essence and like providing it with the right water and the right nutrients and just like everything that it needs and like acupuncture as well as many other healing forms can be used in that vein like with that intention where like it, it, it's consciousness expansion, you know, that's what it's it's primarily focused on, you know, and again, like I said, acupuncture is one of many different avenues, but that's kind of where I've chosen to focus um, my own practice on. So yeah, uh, uh, in a long answer to your question, you know, yeah, I've just, uh, I would say I, I'm a gardener too. Yeah, I love it. And, and, and a good one at that. I mean, I've seen your, I remember in years past your farm and whatnot. So when we had talked originally about, you know, getting you on the show here and um, I have a lot of Chinese medicine people come through the show, obviously, because I'm a Chinese medicine person and, you know, similar field. And I think Chinese medicine needs exposure collectively because there's a lot in here that can help the, the modern American and I think just the population at large. But one of the things that we sort of visited and the thing that we were saying as a core theme, you know, we have lots of tangents that we can go off of and that will connect to this core idea. But the big one which you had mentioned was this, the practice essentially of mindfulness, which is sort of a buzzword nowadays. People are like, oh, mindfulness, yeah, they hear it, but sometimes it gets lost in translation, what that actually means, why it's important. And I think specifically, given the context of the world, what's happening politically, what's happening, you know, uh, the George Floyd with the pandemic, and we have, you know, just the institutions of America, basically, where no one has trust in the media, they don't have trust in anything. And it's, you know, a global shit show in a lot of ways. And this whole idea when you had brought up mindfulness, I thought, yeah, that's pretty, pretty relevant right now, given everything that's going on. So opening it, you know, that we kind of keep that to some degree as the core theme here, mm -hmm. which I'm, like I said, happy to branch out and go around. If you want to, you know, take the floor a little bit, talk about mindfulness. What's that mean to mm -hmm. you? And why the hell is it important in general, but especially right now, too? Because I think people yeah. are in need of tools in a lot of different ways. You know, everyone's dealing with this differently, absolutely. but tools are, are needed. So, yeah, how yeah. about it? Yeah, no, absolutely. So mindfulness for me is uh, it's it's the same thing as awareness. It's the same thing as consciousness you know it's being in the present moment and it's being able to it's like and that's the thing it spans so many traditions over the globe the one that comes to mind is just the teachings of, of Castaneda and his first whole idea of stalking yourself you know what I mean and all that is is like becoming aware of your mind and mm -hmm. becoming aware of 
your thoughts. And our thoughts follow these very specific patterns. I remember hearing Deepak Chopra speak back in like the the late 80s um, about like how I think it's something like 95% of the thoughts we thought today, like we thought yesterday, like we have, <laughs> we're very much like pattern beings. And that's why Chinese medicine works so well. Um, but back to, to mindfulness, like it's being able to, to rein in your mind because really the only place that problems ever exist are, are in the mind. That's why when you're fully present in this moment, like there's never any, there's never really any problems. It's only when you start to think about, oh, what may come in the future and you start to experience anxiety or you start to think about what happened in the past and you start to experience kind of depression and mixed with anger and all this other stuff. But like, mm -hmm. I don't know, I often liken it to like, if you're standing around a pool and like a baby falls into the pool, you don't like, you don't, be like, hmm, we have a problem and like think about what to do. No, you jump in the pool, get the baby out. Like there was never a problem. Yeah. There was a, a situation that called for a response, an appropriate response, and it was taken. And so I think the more we can stay present in this moment, like and oh, be open to our own intuitions, be open to ourselves, which is expressing itself as the outer universe. Like there is no separation here. So like when we're open to the messages that are constantly coming through from our surroundings, which is us, it's like we, but you, but in order to do that, you have to find a certain level of stillness. You have to find a certain level of presence. And that comes only from my experience through practice. Mm -hmm. And like that brings it back around to meditation, you know, and that's like where, that's where like, again, across the globe, there is, value found in sitting still quietly yeah. you know like it's super simple and like as a lot of millions of people have found out like it's not it's not as easy as it sounds you know no, it's, it's uh, difficult you know it's uh i often tell people these four things about meditation you know it's uh it's simple it's not as easy as it sounds it takes a lot of practice and it's worth every ounce of effort you put into it mm -hmm. and it's weird because it's like this thing of like you're and that's the thing too about meditation there are so many different branches to explore as far as meditation goes you know that's like true. so even like trying to define a meditation in that sense like it's like with uh, it's like with any other type of practice, like with a movement practice. It's like try try out different flavors, see what works for you. Maybe you're yeah. maybe you're like me and like yoga asanas are like really gonna stoke your fire. Maybe you're gonna be more into qigong. Maybe you're gonna be more into right. Pilates. I mean, like just it, it's the same thing with meditation. Like try a couple of different. Try a vipassana. Yeah. Try you know try transcendental. Like whatever it is for you, just just try it out. But like. Give yourself some time, like even, I think that's the, the, the issue that most people run into with meditation and in our culture, it's very easy to understand when we're taught to expect instant gratification. Like I've been sitting in meditation for a year, for two years and like nothing's happening. And it's like, well, first of all, there's a lot happening that you're just not aware of right now that you're not aware of yet. Um, and second, it takes a long time. Like this is, we have a lot of shit to unlearn and like a lot of stuff to let go of. And so, I don't know, I recently been like, I, huh, I've been sitting, let's just say for a while, you know, I don't like to put a, a number to it, but like I'm only now after, let's just say like after close to two decades uh, mm -hmm. of sitting, I'm just now beginning to become conscious and aware of some of the fruits of that practice, mm -hmm. you know? So it just, yep. it, it really takes a long time, but coming back again around to today's w what's happening in our world today, like it's so important. We've talked about this many times and I really appreciate the platform to talk about this as well. You know, we've been in the age of information for, for quite a while now, you know, we, we are, we can find, uh, evidence to support just about any claim that we can come up with on our wild human minds. You know, we yep. can, it's out there. Yep. And so and it's naturally like forcing us over into our intuition where we have to begin to redevelop 
our intuition because it's not something that's new. It's not something we need to discover. We just need to remember it. It's like, yeah. it's like hardware in our computer that just like for somehow like hasn't been used in a while. It's just been kind of sitting in a warehouse that we need to like open back up and clean out the cobwebs and be like, oh, wow, this technology is actually far superior to anything that like is is outside of us. You know what I yeah. mean? And that's the that's the trippy place where I feel like we're at right now. We're like we're we're deciding whether to focus more of our energy on on expanding this outer technology mm -hmm. when like we and this goes back to my my days of, of reading Terrence McKenna back when I was like 18. Like we are the cutting edge of technology. We will always be the cutting edge of technology. If we give over our power to something that like we think, I don't know, man. The whole the whole artificial intelligence idea is just such a wild thing. Yeah. You know? Well, let me let me let me pause you before because we could we could yeah. we could spin out into a lot of different directions with this. So just to kind of rein it back in for a second. <laughs> When, yeah. you, when you were starting, I think when we're talking about mindfulness, and, and I'm I'm relatively hip to this idea, as are you. It's a concept we have talked about. It's something that comes up in the circles that we are bumping elbows with. It's consistent. Mindfulness is talked about a lot in the mainstream media. Even you know the people that have the huge platforms are bringing it up. And so distilling it down into simpler terms, when you talked about you know what mindfulness can bring, right? It gives this capacity to observe what's going on and to not let the mind run amok because left unchecked, the mind can cause some serious problems. So when we look at this, when people don't bring mindfulness into their life whatsoever, in a simple way, what does that look like? And I, I know we could just say, well, look at the state of the world, but sure. in real time, for the person who's totally green to the subject, with no mindfulness, what does your life yeah. typically look like? I would say your life becomes very robotic mm -hmm. you know you become like a very huh it becomes very mechanistic it becomes very very uh reactionist it's very mm -hmm. like something happens and then like well this is how i respond to that without any like without any oversight and it's a really funny example of like what is going on in our culture right now because like this is what happens when you don't have good oversight yeah you know um and I'm sorry, I totally don't, just lost my train of thought. That's okay. No, that's a good that's, that's a good place, though, and that's kind of what I was looking for. Is a simple uh, it's a simple answer, which is life becomes reactionary. We become, absolutely we, we become so... reactive to everything that we see, and um, that's a that's a slippery place to be because humans do have reactions. We do have instincts. We have impulsive responses, and those things keep us alive at the right times. Like you said with your analogy, the baby goes in. That is a like kick into gear quickly mode. There's not a lot of like, hmm, and, and letting yeah, things ponder. Contemplation. Yeah. Right. We, 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 we react, we get in there and we take care of what needs to take, get taken care of. But in the instance of things that are happening in the world right now, we're starting to see this thing that where people cannot separate their reaction. They cannot separate social media fosters this better than almost anything where someone puts something up, they're immediately pissed off and they're, they're reactive to it. And you know, the, the capacity to observe and kind of observe your emotions and see what's happening and maybe letting it pass or just not engaging or letting things move and matriculate is something that's being lost. And I think that's the weirdest part about what you're talking about is that we're getting into this reactionary, impulsive, knee-jerk emotional response to everything with no disciplining of the mind to some degree. Yeah. And it seems like it's a really rough spot and you're seeing it. I mean, we're all seeing it. And given everything you've said, what is, again, to the person who's completely green to this, they have no exposure. This is a new age concept for them thus far. They're like, okay, mindfulness. What's, like, what's one of the most basic things a person can do that's relatively universal in terms of, okay, I don't know what the hell mindfulness is. How do mm -hmm. I engage it in the most rudimentary, basic way? Just totally super simple. What would you say to Absolutely. that? Absolutely. And um, my response to that would be like this, this amazing, this amazing earth suit that we're all like, have been blessed with. Yeah. Like it has this amazing aspect to it called the breath. Mm -hmm. It's perfect, perfect timing. I love that. You just took a nice big inhale as I like was just, you know, and that is the biggest thing that you can always connect with. It's right there with you all the time. When I, when I used to teach, uh, 
um, asana at the studio here in town. Like that's the thing. Like whenever you catch your mind wandering, just connect with your breath because your breath is always happening in real time. You're always breathing now. You're never breathing then or over there. Like you're always breathing here. And so as, and again, it's a practice, everything that has to do with any type of consciousness expansion or any type of any expansion, really, it has to do with practice. It has to do with repetition. So as many times throughout your day, as you can somehow bring your awareness back to your breath, like you become more conscious of your breath and you become more conscious of where you are. You know what I mean? I talk about mm -hmm. like the, when you're able to when you're able to find your breath, it brings this amazing sense of balance into your body. And we're in like your breath allows you to also connect with this body awareness, which I think is also one of the reasons why we're having so much pain in our culture, as well as just, just a lot of different issues is because in teaching asana for, for a few years, I realized people are really out of touch with their bodies. You know, they're, they're really like... Yep. They, they are like they can't feel sometimes certain things and I'm like and of course as I in my in my acupuncture practice as well you know there's just it, it's really wild so I think the breath is the primary avenue and it's one of those things like it's gonna keep going the breath is such a beautifully elegant aspect of the human because it's gonna mm -hmm. keep going like we don't have to be aware of it like we can sleep and dream and do all these other things create music make love we're gonna still breathe but yet we still have the ability to modulate it and we can hold our breath if we want and we can breathe real fast you know mm -hmm. uh, there's some amazing amazing therapeutic uh modalities coming out like holotropic breath work where mm -hmm. you're really seriously modulating your breath and taking yourself uh, like way into these expanded states yeah so like the breath has this ability to seriously affect our consciousness like at the baseline level like that I, is what i i really wish could get disseminated throughout culture is mm -hmm. that like breath affects our mind and if you when you develop control over your breath you begin to develop and it's again this takes practice and a lot of time man yeah. like again after almost two decades i'm just now starting to become like to see the fruits of this but like as you become more aware of your thoughts you become you begin to to strengthen that muscle where you can choose your thoughts mm -hmm. and if you subscribe to the notion that our reality is being created with our thoughts then I would much rather create my reality with thoughts that I choose. Oh, we oh. lost you for a quick second there, Ashi. Like oh, time out, Ashi. One, time out one second. Bro. Yeah, yeah. We lost you just for a quick second. There was a little freeze. So you said the last thing before you okay. froze was you said, you know, if it was up to me, I would like to create reality with my thoughts. And then after that, it just kind of, you froze for a minute. So just kind of pick up from that spot that you said after, yeah. I would like to create reality with my thoughts. Yeah. Let me see if I can. Um, yeah. You know, I want to be able to, I feel like our thoughts are often so influenced by culture. You know, it's like we, it's like the media and everything like feeds on our emotions yeah. And our emotions come very much from our thoughts. Let me plug my computer in just so I don't. That's a. Oh, yeah. We don't want to lose power get, on that. You get the power <laughs> warning. You're like, oh, wait a minute. That's not good. Okay. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> Back online. So, um, yeah, if you're if like if you're going to create your own reality, like create it the way that you want it, you know, which is also a really huge question, I think this time in isolation has given us all a lot of a lot of opportunity to focus on is what do we want like what do we really want not what you've been programmed to want not what your your society wants you to want not what like whatever like what do you really want when you and that's the thing too a lot of people don't know because they haven't sat alone with themselves in silence being still for long enough to be able to hear the whisper of our hearts because our hearts are really powerful but like they're like that gentle giant, you know what I mean? Like our hearts don't yell. They don't really talk all that loud at all. Mm -hmm. You need to be pretty quiet to be able to discern the whisper of your heart. Yeah. And in order to do that, you got to be still and you got to be quiet. 
And there's just like so much, bro, my, my meditation practice is more important to me than food. Mm -hmm. Like it's more important to me than, 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 than so many other things. Like I, I feel so grateful for the opportunity to connect with myself in that way and have gained so much from the practice that I just, I, I can't say enough. And, and I think a lot of people, when they first hear about meditation, it's, it's really daunting, you know? Um, I think here in the West, you know, when, 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 uh, when many of us, I hate to use that phrase, like most of us, cause I don't know most people, <laughs> you know, I know a handful of people in like a small part of the world. So most of the people that I know anyways, when they hear meditation, they feel like kind of overwhelmed. Like it's some like super esoteric thing, but it's, it's really just a practice focused on getting you to, to be here now. Mm -hmm. Like that was Baba, that was Ram Dass's whole thing. Like be here now. Yeah. Cause this is where all the magic is happening. Cause this is really the only, only moment there is. Am I freezing again? No, no, you're okay. Did I, am no? I maybe okay. I froze, but no, you're, you're good. So, yeah. Your yeah. picture froze, but like, we'll just keep going. Yeah, so. no, we didn't lose anything. So I think we're okay. Okay. Um, so yeah. Um, well, I don't me, know how much more to, more to expand on that, but yeah. But yeah, let me let me interject into that. So a couple things. I want to share a metaphor analogy with you that sort of, I would say to a degree, it's a common commonality or it's a thread that I've seen over the years with meditation. And then I would like you to add to it or maybe even take okay. away from it or re, you know reshape it a little bit. But sure. one of the key things that has always struck me there's lots of different types of meditation. There is standing meditation. There is uh, branches of medical qigong of meditation. There's meditation in yoga or asanas. There is lots of different types of meditation, TM, you name it. We can do a lot of different mm -hmm. kinds. And one of the key threads that, that I've seen and people talk about is when we get the breathing, we focus on our breathing, we put ourselves into connection with the kinesthetic sensation of our body. And when we do that, we put ourselves into feeling and not thinking as much. And when we're feeling our body, it's sort of like allocating resources. If, you know, the human energetic field, instead of just being up in this antenna, that's just thinking and, you know, calculating and trying to do everything and solve it. We put that, we, we sort of redistribute or allocate those resources back into the flesh suit. We take the current, we spread it out. We feel our body and as such, it by default pulls some of the current out of the thinking mind. And then when we do that, we get back into the body, the mind gets a break. It's almost like a mini fast for the thinking process. The, the thinking process is turned down a little bit and then we realize, usually by some kind of process, we start to feel better. We're like, oh wow, stress levels are a little lower. I feel a little clearer. But when we do that, right, we get our, our mind back into the body, we feel it invariably what happens the mind kicks back up. Oh, I'm having pizza tonight. Or, oh, I got to pay that bill. Or I got to do that. Oh, I got a garden tomorrow. Everything starts to kick back up. And then we rebound it and we pull it back down and we get it back to the body. And that process of going back and forth, of going back to the breath, bouncing back into the head, going back to the breath, is a natural byproduct of the process. And I think, and I would love to hear this is the part I want to hear about, people think that if their mind kicks back up, they're doing it wrong. And the way I've seen it and the way I've mm -hmm. had it t taught to me is like, you can't stop the mind. It's going <laughs> to do its thing. You got to just, you're just, it's sort of like baiting a monkey, the monkey mind, right? You got to bait it back. You got to put mm -hmm. some fr fruit back in the belly so that it goes down there and tries to grab it again. But the bounce back is actually just that. It's the cycle of bringing it back down. Um, so I think there's a, there's a misconception sometimes that if you start thinking you've done it wrong and you failed, which is where all mm -hmm. of the, the huge burden of, Oh shit, I got to learn meditation. It's another burden and it's like you didn't screw up. Right. <laughs> like your mind is totally. your mind's going to bounce. It's supposed to. The, the mind is that's what it does. So, given that concept, what would you add to that take away from it? How would you reshape that? You know, what's what's relevant about that? I guess in the big picture because I think people that's something they get hung up on. Mm. Yeah, no. It's uh, I I really appreciate because Try to almost look at your practices like there are no there are no punishments, there are no mistakes. There's never yeah. you do anything wrong. There are sometimes you do certain things right, and the the only time that you're gonna be aware of yourself doing something right in meditation is when you catch yourself thinking. Like that's awesome. Do you look at that's 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 what it's all about mm -hmm. because you're becoming aware of yourself thinking. 
And mm -hmm. so, okay, whatever, you go back to like your, your activity that you're doing that's bringing you out of the mind and more into your body. And then you're going and then you start thinking about what you're gonna have for dinner or whatever. And then you catch yourself, oh my, I'm thinking again. Awesome, you caught it again. Like one more point for you, you know, like there's, that's what it's all about. So like when you catch yourself thinking, if you can keep yourself from getting frustrated with yourself, that's what it's all about. Like yeah. let go of any expectations that you have. Cause like, just let it go and experience. It's like expectations again are in the future. You're expecting it to be some certain way instead of being present for the experience of the moment that you're having now, you know? And mm -hmm. then you catch yourself, but like we have these crazy, again, these crazy programs in our brains about like what we we should expect of ourselves. Like that is a word I have completely eliminated from my vocabulary. Like mm -hmm. I do not use that word. I do not really register that word. Cause like, it's just like one of those bullshit words. It's fucking meaningless, dude. Yeah. Should, nah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no. I hear you. I hear you. Well, so and and, and back to uh, back to the movement thing. I yeah. wanted to touch more on that before yeah. because, like, again, I think it's so important. One of the things that Lonnie uh, Jarrett talked about in this workshop this last weekend was how depression is almost always a, a veneer or a cover up for anger that is not being able to be expressed. Mm -hmm. Like it's almost there's almost always an anger underlying that, and I think. Maybe in certain situations when you are feeling depressed because you are really angry and there's nothing you can do about it, maybe there's nothing you can do about it, but you can actually move your body in a mm -hmm. mindful way. You can move with breath, you can practice Qigong, you can learn a new Tai Chi form, you can try a new asana or a sequence that you haven't tried. Like There are so many things that you can do. Um, and I think that's, that's where I'm kind of curious about because we do have like this incredible amount of resources at our fingertips, you know, I don't know. I guess I, um, I'm wondering like, maybe this is a great question to you. Like, why do you think more people aren't utilizing like mindful movement and, and like breathing techniques? And, and I, and I know I see, I, I know I see an upswing it in, in it as I'm sure you do as well, but what do you think has been holding people back for so long? Because this information has been out there. It's it's a good question. I think it's there's a couple different things that come to mind. I, I don't think this is everything, obviously. I think it's a nuanced, complex question. But I think the things that come up right, right away are we don't have any connected, consistent, rooted spiritual practice that's taken seriously in America. We have a lot of different religions and practices that all kind of meld. And there's a lot of old traditional dogmatic thoughts about if you don't believe in Jesus Christ, you're going to hell for one. So there's a contentious thing that happens amongst the spiritual undertone of the culture, I think. So people are confused and then they're like, oh, that person's a right wing Christian. I can't talk to them. There's a division that happens with religion, I think, in general. So that piece, I think, is real. I also think that we are an overly mentally stimulated culture. I think a lot of the technology, I think technology has gotten... I think technology has gotten fully awry. I think, like, I've always had this underlying idea or thought. It's more of a pondering. I don't think it's a should or it is right. But I've always wondered and kind of hoped that maybe spirituality, inner technology, and external tech, technology that's outside of us, I've always thought those things probably should run pretty parallel and one should not get too far ahead of the other. And if one mm -hmm. was going to take the lead... For a period of time, I would think that the inner technology should probably get a lead ahead and then let the mm -hmm. external tech catch up. And I think what mm -hmm. has happened is if, you know, I think external tech has like far superseded and has for quite a long time, it's been way ahead of the curve in terms of the inner tech. And so we have mm -hmm. this overly um, mental field. You go onto social media, it's a mental reaction. Think about what a person's doing on on. <laughs> Because social media, they're sitting either with crummy posture, standing up, looking down at their phone. Mm -hmm, they're absorbed, mm -hmm. getting dopamine after dopamine, like a rat in a, like a maze, just taking the pellets yeah. mm -hmm. and getting pissed off in the process, usually, especially now. And then you've, so you've got this hodgepodge of that stuff happening. And people then see a new age, what's called a new age concept, like mindfulness or Tai Chi or something, and they immediately blow it off. It's like, oh, that's just horseshit. Like that right. just sounds like, 
new age Spooey. fluff. Yeah, it's just yeah, it's yeah. just bullshit. So why would I even give it um, the time of day? So I think those are like some big themes that come into play pretty quickly. Why people aren't doing it, and they just haven't had the exposure yeah. or the time. And I think that's a piece of you know it's part of why I started mm-hmm. the podcast. <laughs> it's part of, part of why yeah. I've approached Chinese medicine the way I have is like I'm trying to trying to distill it down and make it simpler and accessible to a degree where it's like okay outside of the the, the theory and and the esoteric stuff that can happen what are the basic things we can actually do what, like how do you make it americanized to a degree like how do you mm-hmm. get it into their head that this stuff is sure. helpful so i think that's like that's a big piece of why i don't think we're able to do it um i guess in my follow-up question to that for you then is if people don't get it and they haven't had the orientation they haven't had the exposure or the relevance hasn't been made clear to them, where do we go from there? Like, it, that's, a, that's a sticky situation, right? You've got too much tech, <laughs> not enough spiritual connection, and then you've got people thinking it's bullshit because it just sounds uh-huh. like a gimmick. Like, what do you do? <laughs> like, what do you do to get people... I mean, I've thought about this. I think about this all the time. How do you make it accessible? How do I talk to the cop and the truck driver and the accountant and say like, hey, there's some immaterial shit that goes on inside of us that's pretty damn relevant. Mm -hmm. So yeah, how do you open that door? I mean, I know it's not an easy question. I'm just curious, like what are basic baby steps? Yeah, no, again, it's just like it always, everything comes back to to being present and to trusting in your own intuition. When you come into contact with like a cop, you're gonna know what to say because you're clear and you're in the moment and you're present. And like mm-hmm. you can you can immediately send out your own energy out into the police officer to begin to fill him with love and connect with his heart on an energetic level before you even say anything to him. You know, it's like, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, um, hmm. tell me more about what what you were just saying again. I think the core themes being, you know, too much technology. That's one. Um, I think we have forced ourselves into a mental sphere, something fierce. I think that's sort of the, like the thing that's happening is that social media, uh, Facebook, Instagram, scrolling on the internet, it is a rat in the maze mental activity. It's almost mm-hmm. like a really aggressive form of mental masturbation that, that we're not even doing it's almost like we're being mm-hmm. masturbated by the thing we're interfacing yeah. with it, it, it's a yeah it, it feels not so great um and then when mm-hmm. i I've, I've gotten off of social media like right now you know everyone is, yeah. is saying right now you've got to be yelling this message you've got to be on social media you've got to be reaching out and talking to people and being you know pushing for activism which i get and all i've said to that in my internal is nope Mm, I'm yeah. I'm not doing that right now. And it's not yeah. because I don't think that what's happening is horrible or atrocious and what, you know, where we are is not bad. It's I don't have the bandwidth for it. It's too much mental energy and when yeah. I spend time in it, it actually starts to make me physically uh ill. Like I've had I, I was telling sure. my wife yesterday, man, I haven't had a panic attack since I was in college. In the past couple of days, I have felt like my anxiety go up just because I'm too exposed to people's outrage mm. on social media. It, it's actually yeah. psych, psychically affecting me. And I'm like, I hear the cause, I hear the thing, I gotta pull away. It's self-preservation, yeah, it, com- it comes down For to sure. that. So I think we've been pushed into the overly mm. mental stuff and because yeah. we're so trained to be up here and we don't even know it, like we don't even understand how the mind really connects with the body. I think because of that, we're finding that people are so, um, they're almost adverse because they're like, why would I go back into my gut? Why would I put my feeling awareness into my belly like or my heart? Like what what the mm-hmm. hell does that even have to do with anything? If it's not on a screen and we're not scrolling and it's not fast and it's not giving me some kind of emotional uptick instantly, mm-hmm. there's a there's a loss of value right now. Like people don't seem to they don't want to do it because they just don't even know better. Like there's a there's a thing that's happened where we've been it's like our mind has been hijacked. I mean, you brought up the AI thing. Yeah. You know, our yeah. it's we're in that era where we're being pushed into like merging with technology. We're being like, where it's becoming a part of us. And um, 
it boggles me that right now people are like, you've got to be screaming on social media and doing these things and calling people. And it's like, everyone's yeah. pushing to say, this is what you should be doing. And I thought, there's that word again. <laughs> yeah. That's what I mean. That's, that's, it's like, when did we get to a place where social me- we're being forced to interface with social media in a specific way because of a, a political movement or a cultural movement, but who says that we have to even like, who says we even have to, like, I thought, well, what, does this mean that I'm a I'm a hateful person if I were to delete my Facebook right now? <laughs> like that's the dialogue we're, right. we're getting into. Yeah. That if you don't go along with the crowd, regardless of if it's a good cause or a bad cause, whatever you want to call it, if you don't go along with it, you're somehow part of the problem. And that is, I mean, that's a psychic rift in my mind where I'm I'm so floored, and I'm also mm. realizing how toxic it makes me feel. And I don't think I'm the only one. Yeah. Maybe, maybe people are aware of it. Maybe they're not. Um, but yeah, that's just me flushing out the idea a little more. Yeah. <laughs> like the hijacking, yeah, no, 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 the hijacking of the mind, in a sense. Nah, it's, um, it, it's really incredible because, uh, how do I put this like really succinct? Um, the more people expect things out there to change, without changing things in here yeah it's never gonna work dude it's never gonna it's never gonna produce the results that they're seeking that's all there is like they want to yeah. change the world out there they want to change all the, the they want to change the anger and the violence by being angry and violent like and i realize like peaceful protesters that's that's really cool and I don't really know how I feel about that, to be honest with you. Like, I don't know if I, I know people, a lot of people say like, that's how, that's how change is affected in our country. And I, and I think to a certain extent, that's true. Mm-hmm. Um, to be honest with you, I don't have a lot of experience with protesting. Yeah. Um, Neither do so I. So I can't really even Neither do I. speak like super intelligently about it. You know, Same. all I can speak about are... The, like the images that I'm seeing at the various protests, so there's they're ranging such a crazy, like it's one of the cool things. I feel really, really, I feel grateful to be close to a city like Portland. Like some of the pictures I'm seeing coming out of that city are really, uh, really, really beautiful and moving mm-hmm. and touching. Uh, there's also, of course, there's a bad shit happening. People, people getting uh, brutalized by yep. those that are supposed to be serving and protecting, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, man, I just think it really, it really should be acknowledged that we're, we're, we're highly underpaying these people that were, that are like put, risking their lives for ours. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, there are so many systems in our culture. I know I'm getting off track a little bit, but like, I just no. want to say this one thing, like there's are are so all, many, all, these systems are all offshoots. In, yeah. In our, yeah. There are so many systems in our culture right now that are in need of uh, almost like a complete overhaul. Like the first one that comes to my mind is just like our education system. Like mm-hmm. it's just it's crazy what we're what we're uh, expecting of our kids and, and putting them through. You know our our whole food system. You know how we go about growing and getting our food. You know our whole energy system and the transition from from earth destroying technologies to more sustainable ones and um just like uh, the, the prison system the, the criminal justice system the uh the healthcare system it's just everything is in so like yeah it's in shambles bro. just total like, total chaos and disarray yeah yeah bro you know it's and just... that's why i think right now what my dream is for all of my brothers and sisters in my tribe, like we need to start coming together. And like, I've, I've been talking about you this, about this for a while, like, but it's time to like really collaborate and give the whole intentional community kind of like the whole, I know what happened in the sixties and seventies in the communes and still continues to happen really unhealthily yeah. in many places throughout Oregon today. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think that there's another way I like to believe that enough uh, I don't, I don't like to, t- to use the term awakened because I don't think we ever fully like awake, yeah. you know, like yeah. it's not some end point that we're all going to get to, but like right. people who've, who've, who've woken up enough to actually get out of their fucking bed and start doing something. Like those are the people that I want to start collaborating as far as 
creating and redesigning the systems that are going to sustain us and our families for, for generations because like the technology is not lost. Like I was saying before, it just needs to be rediscovered. It needs to be remembered. You know, it needs to be put back together again in the minds of the modern human. And it's like, it's all there. It's, uh, it's so cool, man. In, in my, in my short, but wonderful time, uh, studying at the university of Hawaii, you know, like we, we studied the, the Ahupua'a system, which is their system of land management, you know, and it's, it's, it's like beautiful because it takes into account the, the lay of the land. It's like here in the West, we just have these little like squares. We just plot it out. It's like without really, I don't know. I think we could, I think there are so many areas without getting off on a more of a crazy tangent. There are just so many areas that we can and are improving on, you know, and it goes yeah. back to again, mindfulness and bringing it back to kind of the initial vein of this talk is that like when you're able to choose what you're thinking about, you can choose to think about things that are positive and uplifting and shit yep. that's going to make you really stoked about your life and be like, yeah, oh my God, I'm alive. I have a mind. I have a body. I have my breath. I have like, I have choices because mm -hmm. that's, I think what we're all really looking for is yeah. just more choices. Yeah. Um, Agreed. And, and I like, that's, that's the biggest thing, man. It's like when you, when you can choose what you focus on, then you can choke focus on all of the amazingly incredible, positive life, affirming, uplifting, heart blowing, stunningly shit that's happening. Like, cause it's happening now too. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, we've been programmed to focus on the negative. It's like, uh, who, who's that psychologist or psychiatrist that talks about the automatic negative thoughts? Um, uh, Dr. Amen, he talks about and like how, how we have these automatic thoughts as humans that we need to become aware of. And like, as soon as they start to enter into our thought process, just take them out, just nip them in the bud. It's so much easier to take out what could eventually develop into this massive oak tree of thought of fear. If you think about this massive oak tree, that's just like this fear. What about if you get it when it's just like this little tiny thought? And you can just snuff it and mm -hmm. it never has a chance to grow into this big oak tree. You yeah. know, it's like that's when mindfulness and awareness become so important because you are able to identify those little hooks of fear that want to make their way into your thought process and hook your attention and pull you into fear. And like that's when shit starts to get rough. You know, and I mean, that's when the waves yeah. pick up and the wind starts blowing and the seas get crazy. And it's not so easy to navigate in rough seas as it in as it is when there's a calm breeze on a sunny day. Yeah. You know, it's like they're just two totally different things. And the thing is about all of this is we have a choice. We each have an individual choice about what to do with our lives. Mm -hmm. And so like saying that somebody else like makes me feel this way or makes me feel that way. I'm sorry, but like. That's just fucking bullshit. Nobody makes you. You feel what you feel because of how you process whatever it is you're experiencing, and it's a it's it's a practice, and it's really tough because it requires a really high level of responsibility, of emotional responsibility, of mm -hmm. being like, all right, I feel this way. First of all, it's even be able to identify that you feel some way. Like a lot of times, I feel like there's so much like rampant anger that's going around. Like people aren't even aware that they're angry. Like, yeah. I, I don't know. Why? Well, so just no. I hear you, man. And I, and to be sort of devil's advocate too, you know, and to like share because I've heard these conversations. Yeah, like yeah. Bring, and I, I love being self-reflective. Yeah, yeah, like totally. I've, I've had very similar conversations to this. And the thing that I've, I've tried not to change, I guess, and I've sort of had to bear witness to and just basically watch. It's like almost like watching the person go through it. Um, you know, I have a number of black friends and. I've talked to them about what's going on in the world right now. And they said, you know, we're talking about mindfulness. We've talked about meditation, like how to like do things. And I think what has happened is when people have felt, you know, when they've felt so victimized or that like, you know, God, I, I wish I hadn't watched it, but I, part of me was like, I'm going to watch it. You know, I, I watched the, the, the murder of George Floyd, you know, like I watched that happen. And I thought that is one of the worst things I've ever seen. And it is going to, it's tattooed in me forever as it is. I think whoever else watched it, it's stayed with us. It's going to be there. Yeah. And, you know, I think when that happens, there is like the emotions are so high that people 
can't even get to a place where they're like, I can't calm down yet. You know, and I think that's kind of like, it's like this very intense, like, this is like the most horrible thing I've ever seen. And people are so enraged about it. And I understand why, like, I really do. I went through it at first and then it just became this very deep sadness. And like, that's where I've been. It was like outrage and anger for a spike for me. And then it was just like, oh my God, like just sad, truly like the deepest, darkest sorrow. And I think that's where the struggle comes in is like, I think people have a very real difficult time. I think that's what we've, we've, we have lost connection with spirit and breath and mindfulness to the point where we have this, the emotions are their own thing now. They're, they're a living entity, almost like a personality where they swell and they rage. And it's like, well, <laughs> it's going to have to maybe swing that pendulum maybe, you know, cause I've, I've like, mm. I've heard people talk about this and just say how, how upset they are about it. And I'm like, yeah. And I've just kind of, I just kind of observe, sure. them. I just observe them. I just watch them. I'm like, I can't, yeah. I can't fix it. You know, I'm like, I'm just going to bear witness to the rage and let them go through it. And um, that's a hard thing to watch, man, because all I really end up getting to a place of is like, I feel for them. I have empathy for them. Yep. And it's not like um, I could tell. Compassion, yeah. Yeah, it's like I can't really tell, you know, any of my black friends like, well, bro, just breathe through it. I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm pretty much going to be like, yeah, like feel what you're feeling. And I don't know, man. Like, I don't have answers for like how people can do it. I mean, it's going to be a different, unique process, how we all process what's going on in the culture. But I, I do know it's like things will have to settle some, you know, the emotions are going to have to flare. And then when things drop, I think, I hope that's where, um, when the water settles some, the people open and invite these tools in. I think there's kind of like a, and I know it's like, you could argue like, well, bring the mindfulness in at the peak rage. And I'm like, man, I've been in peak rage not about this, uh, other things in my life. And I'm like, why? Wow. Like I really, <laughs> I wasn't successful. You know, I really wasn't. And it doesn't mean that it couldn't no, be done. Dude, you know, it it's takes like, a huge commitment, bro. Oh like God, it takes yeah. this crazy commitment yeah. to be able to do that. You have to be committed to like, to know, to like creating the space in your heart and in your mind to where like, you'll have then. And that's why meditation is so important is because like yeah. when you get into that rage, you have created this like minute little bit of space in your heart so that you can be like, Oh, check it. I'm getting really upset right now. Yeah. Exactly. And just that little bit of space, that, spark. that little bit of awareness just goes and it blows the whole situation up and you can see it more clearly, you know, but yeah. like, yep. I understand bro. Like, trust me, I've, <laughs> I have, uh, I have dealt with issues as well. Um, we both have, and I think one of the things anger. going back, yeah. yeah. We both have anger issues. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's, we all have fear issues, yeah. bro. We all have fear issues and we all have love issues. Like really it all comes down to that. Do trace any negative emotion back to its core doing it is based in fear. You know, mm -hmm. when you're sad, you're depressed, you're angry, whatever it is, if you're not happy, or you're not joyful, if you're not content and peaceful, you're afraid of something. You're mm -hmm. either afraid of losing something that you have yeah. or you're afraid of not getting something that you want. Mm -hmm. Super simple, man. Too basic fears of every human on the planet, including myself. Like, and that's the thing too. Like oh, yeah. I realize in all of this, hmm, this is a really interesting story. <laughs> like this is a really, really interesting unfolding of reality. Like I didn't, I didn't really see it taking this turn, but, um, you, do you mean the current bro? Like what, like what we're I going believe through? It, is that yeah. What the, the turn of events worldwide, the yeah. turn of events in my own, like everything, bro. I just like, it took like this whole crazy, like, woo, um, but like I, from the beginning, I'm, I'm really excited about all of it. Like this is really, this is really weak. We, we, we've been in a really unhealthy situation for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. You know, we never, <laughs> we never left the dark ages, bro. We're still living in them. Like with mm -hmm. all the fucking technology, like it doesn't mean shit. We're yeah. still in the dark ages. Yeah. We're treating other humans as being subhuman, dude. Like. Give me a fucking break. Mm -hmm. To be honest with you, the fact that we even need the police in the fucking first place is a sign of like our spiritual lack of growth and immaturity. Like really, dude, we, we can't like uh, behave ourselves. We need like to be policed by people. Mm -hmm. What? I got, I got, <laughs> I got time warped into the wrong time, bro. Cause I don't belong here, but here I am. And yeah. that's where the thing is that like my mind goes into that thing like, oh, I don't belong here. I'm from some other, I'm from some other time. I'm from the Pleiades or whatever. Like, that's cool. But I'm here now. And so are you. Yeah. 
we're here and, and we, so like, <laughs> what are we gonna do exactly we're all and, here. and like yeah that's, it's it, that's right they yeah. were all here and we're all in this together and yeah. once we can fucking get over that like that humanitarian hump of like we're all in this together <laughs> like it's so elementary and yet oh it's, it's so i agree and it's so I, difficult for people to grasp it like is, it we is. have the resources to totally transform this planet into a heavenly realm what, what are we waiting for I don't know, man. I mean, I, I don't know. And, you know, there's lots of different schools of thought. Like, even <laughs> even if we got to a quote-unquote heavenly realm, right, like, would there still be disharmonies? And it's like, probably, yeah. I mean, I think that's the nature of whatever this simulation is, this 3D reality, there are some parameters. And I think part of it is duality, opposition. And, like, that's how we understand. Like, I don't even know. Who knows? Like, maybe it is, right? Maybe, maybe if we broke that code, like, maybe this dimension would become immaterial or, like, less material. I don't know. Like if it's like getting a level up in Super Mario Brothers, maybe that would happen. Maybe it wouldn't. Like I keep wondering, like maybe the game is, <laughs> maybe the game is supposed to be like flawed and stuck here while we're alive. Like I really don't know. I can't speak to it. But I do mm -hmm. wonder, man, because I've got people, I've had this conversation with you. You know, I am, I have a, I have part of my, my life, I'm between black and white, I'm gray. You know, like my name, it's like a, the ongoing joke of my <laughs> life. I've got friends who I've known for many years who are Trump supporters. I've got friends who are Bernie supporters. I've got people who supported Hillary, people who are libertarian, people who were Green Party. I've got my hands in them and my baseline is like, are they good people to me? How do they operate in society? Are they, you know, are they good? Are they fundamentally good people even if I have differing views with them? And it's the weirdest thing, man, right now to see it because I'm friends with a number of cops. I've got at least four or four people who are like fully engaged in law enforcement right now who I've known since I was a lot of one of them, you know, since I was a kid and they're good people and they are equally mortified mm -hmm. by what's going on in this situation. And it's a weird thing mm -hmm. to be, oh God, to have both. I have friends who hate police, like hate them, like just totally cannot stand. And I understand it given what's going on. And then I've got friends who are police officers. I'm like, these are good people who are actually fighting the good fight. I totally get them too. And then mm -hmm. I've got people who are in support of police who are not people who are. And it, I think that's the hardest part is do we get to a place where we accept differences and try to find common ground between. Uh, and then what is the common ground for each person? My common ground and your common ground are probably going to be a little different. <laughs> you know, there's going to be some different fluctuations. Yeah. And I think that's the hardest part is finding in this mix of mindfulness, awareness, being attentive to people that are different than us. How do we find that ground where we are together moving forward and not trying to kill each other because that's where, I mean, things are, you know, there's so much conflict, man. It's, it's mind boggling. I wish I had answers. I don't, I have a lot more questions mm -hmm. more than mm -hmm. anything, but I'm here along sure. for the ride just like you and everybody else. And like you said, we're here. So we do have to deal with it. You know, it's, there's no getting around it. Like there's definitely how we deal with it. I think is going to be different from person to person, but we do have to deal. There's no wiggle room, man. Like it's just, it's a part. Yeah. Of, it's part of the scene now. Yep, and I think one of the biggest ways that we can, we can bridge some of those gaps is like to. To spend time with each other, yeah. you know, like to come away from the screens. I know I realized with the the pandemic happening, you know, and it's it's a little little challenging for that now. But um, yeah. I don't know when when this when all of the uh, the dust settles. You know, I think it's really important, and that's what I was talking about before. Like, I think where we're headed as a as a species on this earth, or where I would like to see us headed rather, is towards more uh, creating more community. Like, I really think we need to be there for each other on a deeper level on a more like consistent basis. Mm -hmm. Like when I wake up in the middle of the night and I can't sleep, I'm much more likely to find relief from somebody else who might not be able to sleep than, than being on my own and being left to my thoughts. If I haven't practiced mindfulness again, I'm just kind mm -hmm. of using that as a, as an example, you know, but like. I don't know, bro, living in these little these little square boxes with all of these corners where energy gets caught and shit. It's just like 
I don't know, man. It, it, it's not a sustainable way of life. And like, that's the thing is like, we've been, we've been living all of these really unsustainable ways for, for a while. And we, we need to see that before we can change. Like, it's really hard to change uh, uh, anything until you realize it needs to be changed. You know, and that goes kind of into my understanding of, of the uh, emotion associated, associated with the wood element. You know, you speak yeah. of anger yep. and it's like, you don't, you don't never want to be angry. You know, it's really important to have there are no like unimportant emotions. Like nothing you ever experience yeah. is like invalid or like like wrong. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so like anger is that same energy that allows that that sprout to be like mm -hmm. and like push through the soil. You know, it's that same energy that allows new creative ideas to come forth and be born and be like pushed up through the soil of like your awareness into the open air and to be shared with the world. Like Agreed. it's, 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 it's okay to feel angry. You know, if you realize that we only are angry about situations that we think should be some other way. And there's that word again, mm -hmm. and it's just going to cause a lot of problems until you totally, uh, by, well, whatever, you know, it's like, you, yeah. When you start thinking about some way something should be, that just breeds anger and frustration because you're not accepting the way it is. Like, there's no mistakes. There's nothing wrong here. Nobody, there's, like, this is how it's happening. And I think it really goes back to this deeper, like, cultural, it's almost like worldwide religious, like, really mistrust in God. You know what I mean? Or, or like, this, 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 this ultimate thing, like, why do you need to be so armed if you trust in, like, if, if you really believe everything is going to be okay? Like, what is everybody so afraid about? Mm -hmm. Like, everybody is so afraid of death. Like, <laughs> you know, it's funny. Oh, man, <laughs> I feel like, and I'm, I've talked to, I've talked to, <laughs> no. I've talked to a lot of people oh, about man. this, you know, and it's like, death is not the opposite of life. Yeah. We, we've been, we've been like, and there's so many things I've, when I, when I became aware of this, I've really looked and I've found like so many, like you see it all over the place, life yeah. and death, life and death. Like death is not the opposite of life. Death is the opposite of birth. Yeah. Like there is no, there is no opposite of life there. Even in all the traditions, like they talk about the afterlife or whatever, like yeah. there's no, there's no, like death is a, is a, <laughs> and I think it, it's a transition. Like, it's not like death doesn't exist. Just like birth, you know what I mean? Like yeah. birth exists, so death oh, no. does too. But it's, it's just like our concept of what death encapsulates is like totally, I feel like, off track. Yeah. We're afraid of this thing that like we don't need to be afraid of. Well, I think that's the – so we've talked about this before, right? And you're like – so you know, we talked about people who are like very pro you know, Second Amendment who want guns and, and who are – and I – did I – after a couple weeks ago, we talked about this and you said that to me, you're like, well, like, why do you need to be armed if you believe in God? And I was like, that's a pretty reasonable question, you know, if, for the, the, the Christians. And dude, like, like two days later, I saw this guy on the, on the news and it was like, I'm not saying it's a right answer, but he was like, it was that very thing though. It was a religious kind of backdrop question to like, okay, so if you have faith in a higher power, why do you need, to, if, you know, if you're protected by God and the guy was just like, I believe in God, I don't believe in groups of people. And he was just like adamant, you know, he's like, I don't trust in people. And, and it made me laugh because I was like, oh, God, it's an overly simplistic answer. And also uh, how a lot of people think, I think they're like they don't or we don't maybe see or acknowledge the spark of God within each other enough or at all. And therefore, there's a separation between hmm. humanity and God. It's that that is how people are thinking about it. It's like so you could call Completely. it you could call I it know. a separation. So it's like that. But that process, yeah. you're like, wow, that's a lot of people are thinking it like that. And that's where we are sort of in life. And that's, you know, that's a difficult place to be, man. I think I think the thing as you're talking too, because I can hear and, you know, we're watching it on the news. We're hearing people talk about it. And I've heard enough people say that they're like, you know, uh, the word should, right? Cops should be protecting. They should not be killing, right? They should or they should be doing this. They should be doing that. And I think that's where people get really heated because it's hard, I think, and I've struggled with this in my own practice of stuff. It's a spiritual idea, and then I think sometimes the ugliness of 3D reality makes it hard to bridge the two. There's, there's a real like, man, it's so ugly and it's so emotional. How do we actually get to that place? And I think it kind of distills down to what you're saying, right? It's like, no one said it was easy. Probably the most difficult thing ever. 
to to bridge that space of like, yes, the human condition is really fucking ugly. It's horrifically ugly in a lot of ways and incredibly beautiful also. But you plant the seed and it's it's a practice to make that process better, not even make it perfect, but to make it better. And I think that's the thing that I'm, as you're talking, I can hear the counterpoints of people like what they would say if they were in my seat, you know, and I'm like, yeah, I hear that. And it kind of comes back to, yeah, it's really ugly, but we better have some tools to deal with the ugliness. And that's kind of, I think, like the takeaway you're saying is like, yeah, it's super hard. You've been doing this almost 20 years and you're just now starting to really sink into some of the the meat and potatoes of what this Mm -hmm. is delivering. But it does start with just a practice. It starts with little tiny baby steps. And I think that's the thing. As you were talking about this a few minutes ago, I thought, you know, what different ways, like with the pandemic, man, like there were the government kind of said, at least here in America, there's one way to deal with this. Kill the economy, drop everybody. Everyone's in quarantine for months and everything's going to fall apart. But we're going to protect ourselves from this really buff flu on steroids. We're going to protect ourselves from that. But everything else is going to fall apart. It's like there were probably some other ways we could have done that. And that's the thing I'm seeing with this is like there are other ways to potentially do this. What if in this global shit show... If it was not that people would do it, but what if it was made mandatory where 50% of the population had to just sit still and quietly for 20 minutes? What would that do without us screaming and going around? What would actually happen as just as, as a method, right? As another way to do it. Like what would happen without any action technically of just sitting still and being quiet for a little while? Like what would that do if half, if billions of people did that at one time? So you hear what I'm saying? you get what I'm kind of like throwing down. It's like, there's other ways. I I totally hear what you're saying. Yeah. There's lots of ways to do things. The thing that that comes up for me though, is it like, (laughs) if if you're going to force people to sit down, yes, it's just not going to work. Correct. Like it has to come from them. Like you're you're like, that's the whole thing. Thank you. Because this brings me back to what you were saying before. Like, how do we get like, my question for you was, why do you think people haven't engaged more in mindfulness practices. And the question you came back at me at was, how can we get people to be more conscious of this? And like, I, I, I don't, I don't really know. And I, I don't, I don't, I kind of care because I think this world would be just like so much more dope if more yeah. people were more yeah. awake, you know, and I think it'd be more fun for me as well as them. But like, it's one of those things, bro, you can't, you can't help somebody who doesn't want to be helped. You can't, you cannot. Force. Yeah, I know you can't force. Yeah, bro. You can't teach somebody who doesn't want to learn. That's the biggest thing. Like that's, what's so wrong with our schools today. Dude, like the kids don't want to learn. They're into just like, what? but yeah. I can go home and like get crazy ultra stimulated on like basically like <laughs> virtual excitotoxin shit, you know, on the computer. Yeah. Like no way. It, Easy. It goes so, back to like, that, that force. Until we piece. start to make yeah. education. Yeah, until we start to make education like interesting again, dude, we're never gonna really have true learning. We're gonna have people fucking memorizing shit so that they can spit it back out when it's time to take a test. And like, again, dude, it's just robotic. It's mechanistic. It's like, well, it's dystopian. Yeah, I mean, there's I there's so many threads here. We could be here for hours, obviously, you know. And for the sake of the podcast, we won't be. But. Um, you know, I think this last little thread that at least that has coming up for me, it, it comes back to this idea of forcing, which I think is a form of it's control, you know, forcing a person to do something they don't want, whether it's good or bad, the title you put to it. But forcing, Chinese medicine says this, right? You can't force qi. You can't force bioelectric current. It has to either open on its own accord. You can guide it, but you can't force it. And people are the same way. You can't force someone's free will. And if you do, there's going to be pushback and rebellion because it's an energy that's not supposed to be pushed. And I think that's, you know, I posted recently on um, Carl Jung is a huge influencer in terms of like how he's made me think about things. And lots of traditions have said this, but the way he said it, and I still really adhere to this, he's like, look, you cannot tend to the shadows of other people. You can't tend to their shadow. It's theirs and theirs alone. It's theirs to deal with. It's their karma. It's their thing. You have got to let them unwind it personally inside in the inner kingdom of God. You've got to let them do that. If you start trying to tend to people's shadows outside, yours becomes denser and darker. And I thought, God, that's a that's a pretty, the ramifications of that statement and that idea, I feel like are so relevant right now because everyone is trying to tend to everyone else's shadow. Everyone, and I think it's understandable. Yeah. We, we, we are screaming about each other's shadows because we're like, hey, 
everyone's shadows are real and we haven't been dealing with them. So we're all kind of projecting out. And I think it's a pretty reasonable spot to be given where we are developmentally as a species. No judgment on it. But I'm also kind of brought back to this thing where I keep thinking it's not really sustainable either. Like it's, you got to tend to yours. And I think that's what a lot of the activists are saying right now. It's like, right, look at yourself. Fair enough. Um, But how we look at ourselves is going to be unique from person to person, right? It's not a one shot shotgun approach, I don't think, to everybody. We can't say everyone do the same thing. It's like, yeah, how I'm intended, my shadow's probably gonna be a little different than yours, you know, and Jim Bob next door to me, and, you know, the people around. So in any case, man, those are my thoughts. It's a good conversation. I appreciate you being here, Ashi. Um, and if I say Ashi, that's just Ashi's nickname, <laughs> personal friendship nickname. Um, what do you, what do you have, man? If you want, if you want to kind of wrap this up, and like, is there anything that we didn't touch on that you feel is just, you know, kind of um, solidifying and, mm-hmm. you know, bringing bringing things back to um, a simple summary? Yeah, I think some of the most important things that each of us can do to take care of ourselves in this time. Um, I think first of all is just like I was just seeing my teacher just like stay stoked like Mm -hmm. there's a lot to be stoked about but like you have to want to be able to focus on it Um, but just like breath diet movement sleep connection with other people like it's really simple like you're creative like I I don't know I'd love to have another talk with you sometime on this just about like really um, really focusing on our, our creative potentials within within us like I, I I like you I know have have had so much fulfillment and enjoyment and satisfaction from from what I'm able to create with this mind and this body that I'm yeah somehow controlling magically right now you know yeah, like, right. so I just like I don't know, man. I, I know there's a lot to there's a lot out there to like really be affected by. And that's okay. Like everything is okay as long as you're aware of it. Like just be aware of it. Observe what's happening. Like it's okay to be totally pissed off. Just be aware that you're totally pissed off. It's okay to yeah. totally like react to this and like go get a 12 pack and get crazy drunk. Like that, just be aware of it. If you can do that, like you're amazing, you know? But like yeah. just be aware of what you, what you do, you know, how you respond to stuff so that you're better able to choose because ultimately all of life is one big choice. And yeah. it's the one thing that we cannot get away from. Like you have to choose mm-hmm. in this life. It's like you have to choose and deciding not to make a choice is a choice in itself. And that's why like, there's no getting out of it. Yeah. And so the choice is up to each of us. Like we're living in heaven and we're living in hell right now. Mm-hmm. It's up to each of us to decide what we're going to cultivate now. What plants are you going to take care of? the weedy thorns and like the pokey cactus sure they're they're they're, they have their purpose our fears have their purpose yeah or are you going to tend to are you going to tend to the 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 goji berry bush and like all the other wonderful plants again they're not better than the other plants they just produce different fruits yeah and i'm more interested in those fruits than i am in getting jabbed by a thorn yeah this is is personal that's just that's just me yeah totally man preference i i I appreciate it well, if people want to um, follow you, check you out, you know, in the social media world, the website, is there anywhere that we should, um, that people can find you that you yeah. prefer to find, you know, where they, we can, I can direct uh, them to? Sure. Let me, uh, I would say I don't have a website yet. Okay. Um, and I, as I had said before, it's something I wanted to, uh, <laughs> haven't, uh, anyways, here's my card. Can you read, can you read that? Okay. Yeah, let's see, because this this will be on iTunes also. So I'm going to read, um, what do you want me to give them, your phone number or the email? Uh, either one, to be honest with you. That's, uh, yeah. Uh, all right, well, so. Either one. So I'm going to give, um, put that back up there for a second, Ashi, for the people that are just listening and that yeah, are yeah, not yeah, watching yeah. YouTube. So Ashi's email is kokuawellnessmac at gmail.com, and that is K-O-K-U-A wellness w-e-l-l-n-e-s-s-m-a-c at gmail.com so if you want to get a hold of ashi or antonio here and you want to check out his work or you know pick his brain on chinese medicine or anything he's doing that's probably the best way to get a hold of him so much appreciated for you being here thanks for taking the time um you know people that are listening 
I, and I'm sure you feel the same way, but I mean, I'm just sending out a prayer to sort of the planet that we're all compassionate understanding as we go through this really ugly, tumultuous time because I think everyone is, you know, everyone is feeling the pain that every, that is happening in the world right now. And I just want people to know that I'm thinking about it. My prayers are definitely sort of at a global scale right now. They have been for a couple weeks. And um, I just hope that this finds people well. They got something from it. They had something to talk about, um, something to think about. And that's pretty much it, man. Anything else you want to say before we sign off? No, I think I'm uh, pretty, pretty good. I also just wanted to put that out there, too, to, to people who are either watching or listening. You know, um, my heart is open as well. Like, I am in, in the phase in my life um, where I'm really in the process of putting myself out there. So if there's anything that you want to talk about or anything that you heard me talk about today that you want to know more about or, or whatever, um, I'm just, I'm open. And I think... Uh, I think there's a lot that we can teach each other when we're when we really open our hearts and we we kind of follow those little intuitive hunches or nudges. Yeah. You know, and we're like, oh, that can't be real, or oh, he he couldn't have been talking to me. Like I'm just like, no, w there's only one of us here. Like that's the, that's the big like when we can overcome that, like it's just gonna be some fucking real shit on this planet. Mm -hmm. But like, there's only one of us here. So in any way that I can help, I'm here to help, just like I know you're here to help, Grayson. And like, yeah, uh, yeah it's okay. My, I guess I would go out with just the whole the whole chaos concept. You know, it's like when oh, when a caterpillar is transforming into a butterfly and it's in the cocoon stage, and you go up to it with a little razor blade and you slice it open. Not that I would ever do that, and I have never done that, but <laughs> yeah. I've seen a video of it. <laughs> um, but anyways, like it, it just oozes out. It's like this mass that you would never be able to tell that it was either a caterpillar or a butterfly. It's just like, bleh, yep. you know, and that's chaos. And that's what we're heading into right now. We're heading into like the transition period where it's going to get really, really odd and really weird and shit's going to seem upside down. And like, yep. we're like, in what, it. huh? But like, just trust that. It, yeah, exactly. We're in it. We're in the thick of it. Just trust we're in it. that we live in perfection and we always have. And don't let your limited human mind try to trick you into thinking that there is something wrong with anything. Like if you see something that you think is wrong, I think that is a, a signal to yourself that like there's some part of you that either needs to take action to ameliorate that outside or take action to ameliorate whatever was inside you that even noticed that. Because if, even if you notice something happening, it, guess what? It's already in you for mm -hmm. you to notice that. So anyways, dude, I, we, we could talk for, for days, and I realize uh, these things have time limits. but They do. I just, I just love you so much. I'm, I'm glad you're in my life, bro. Yeah, likewise, man. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate your time, your thoughts. Um, lots to talk about here. Open to conversation as well. There's always, um, you know, we could... People I know when they listen to podcasts, they can always, they're like in their head, they're like, they want to push back on ideas too, and reasonably so. Like I could hear myself in my head. I'm like, there's so many devil devil's advocates I could play in this conversation. So um, I just want sure. people to know too, as we're talking about this, I don't have it solidified. I don't feel like I have all the answers. I'm pretty sure you don't either. And um, you know, we're all oh, kind hell of- hell no, dude. I have way more questions. <laughs> yeah, me too. We're doing the best we can with what we've got. So Everyone stay safe out there. Thank you for being here, man. Um, I will see you next time, and I'll see you guys all on the next episode of Lifestyle Medicine. So thanks for being here. Yeah, man. Ahoy ho. All right. Take care.